Hey, this is Martin from BigBoyPlants.com and in today's video we're going to talk about the alocasia. Alocasia plants stand out in any indoor environment. Also known as the elephant ear or African mask plant, these elegant and long-lived house plants can give life to any living room or office. However, there, there are certain guidelines you need to follow to keep them stunning. To take care of an alocasia, you should keep in mind the following recommendations. First, they need exposure to indirect light. Avoid direct sunlight as it could burn its leaves. Second, keep it so moist by maintaining a regular watering schedule. Make sure that water logging is not created. Then. Frequent misting is recommended to keep humidity high and prevent the plant from pests like spider mites. But did you know that the alocasia plant will give you signs in case it's not receiving enough light? Or maybe you're wondering what type of soil you should use to prevent your alocasia from overwatering. These are only some of the topics we have researched and compiled in this video. So here I have my alocasia taro. By the way, there are more than 80 varieties of alocasia. Some of them very cool like the alocasia poly or the alocasia pink dragon. Make sure to check them out. Alright, let's jump into the details of these caring guidelines. The caring guidelines can be grouped in the following categories. Light, watering, humidity, hygiene and disease prevention. So let's get started with light. Alocasias will thrive in an environment with bright indirect light. You may be wondering, is the alocasia an indoor plant then? Yes. Look for a window or a balcony that receives a good amount of light during most of the day. However, be wary of direct sunlight, since it could burn your alocasia's leaves or generate excessive heat. And as with most plants, the flip side is also true. Needless to say, avoid placing your alocasia in a dark room or a corner. This will negatively impact their growth and health. Therefore, a combination of generous indirect daylight, a bit of direct sunlight, and some hours of shade should do the work. Something that caught my attention during the first week after buying my alocasia was how its leaves moved towards the light source. In this case, it was a window. So what I noticed is that from one day to another, the leaves from the alocasia were closer to the window and they changed their shape and opened up. Also, the petioles or these stem leaves or leaf tucks also called like that, they were standing and getting more rich. So I decided to run an experiment and I rotated the pot. Well, as expected, the leaves that looked more dormant were now expanding and showing more vitality. This short story is useful because, as you might have guessed, it is important to perform a rotation schedule with your allocation to ensure all the areas of the plant receive proper and direct light. This could be done periodically or every other day. Some plant owners are more strict and rotate the plant pot 90 degrees every time they water it. The latter approach could be easier to implement as you are stacking two caring tasks. What you will get from having this rotating ritual will be an even growth across all your alocasia and this will enable a more efficient photosynthesis. To watering. These plants don't like too much water as it can cause its roots to rot. However, they don't like it too much dry as moisture is important for them to thrive. The rule of thumb here then is Check it on a daily basis and check if the soil is moist. If you poke a finger and feel it dry to the touch, 
Then proceed to water your plant with around 10 ounces of water, maybe one and a quarter cups, and allow the top layer of the soil to absorb the water before pouring another round. It is also recommended to mist the leaves every two or three days, as this will increase the overall humidity around your plant, and most importantly, it will keep away spider mites. It is also important to mention that you can choose a little but frequent approach and water your alocasia every day, but in a small quantity, about two ounces. This will keep the soil moist and should not cause water logging. Humidity. I used to think that a dry environment benefited the alocasia leaves, but boy, I was wrong. Well, alocasias show a strong preference for very, very humid surroundings. Sorry. Besides the frequent mystic recommended in the past section, other options you might want to explore is to place a pebble tray nearby or include some perlite on the top soil layer. Now let's talk about hygiene and pest prevention. So spider mites are one of the worst enemies your alocasia can have. These guys will find in your plant's leaves the ideal place to place their cobwebs or reproduce. To avoid this, you should implement a leaf and stock cleaning routine. Yeah, that's right. We recommend you dust the leaves regularly when you rotate your alocasia and wipe down any cobweb you spot. If you want to bulletproof your alocasia and maximize pest prevention, you can mix some water with mild soap in a spray bottle and mist the plant leaves and stalks once per month. Even though this sounds a bit extreme, this is one of the solutions if the worst scenario happens and your alocasia is infested by spider mites. Nobody wants that. So if the invasion has already taken place, Remember to isolate your alocasia from other plants and try to increase its humidity by misting it several times per day. There are other aspects you should consider like soil, repotting and fertilizing. So let's start with soil. As explained above, you might want to avoid water from getting clogged as this can put the whole root system at risk. If you're buying your alocasia, make sure you double check that it already comes with the proper soil mixture. The same applies if you're parting it from scratch, by the way. Therefore, the golden soil mix to remember consists of the following. African violet blend and perlite in a proportion of 2 to 1. Alternatively, you can use a mix of potting soil, horse and sand in equal parts. Some seasoned alocasia owners suggest that a few pieces of charcoal at the bottom of the pot can be a trick to boost the drainage properties of the soil mix and avoid water clogging. Let's go through some frequently asked questions regarding advanced caring guidelines. Question number one, how often do you need to repot your alocasia? Since alocasia roots do not expand a whole lot, Repotting may be not strictly necessary to do. However, you can perform this task every 12 to 18 months with the goal of providing it with new soil filled with plenty of nutrients. In terms of pot size and dimensions, a good starting point is a cube shaped pot or a circular pot with about 18 inches of diameter be very careful if you decide to repot it to a larger pot, since an abrupt change in the container dimensions can negatively impact the roots and even drown the, the, the plant. How often should I fertilize my alocasia? That's another question we see a lot online. Well, experts agree it's best to fertilize your alocasia once per month in the months from spring to fall. During winter, you can pretty much skip this carrying task as the plant growth naturally decreases and enters in dormancy. Using an organic plant fertilizer 
fertilizers is recommended. However, keep in mind you should apply it when the soil, soil is damp. There is a high risk of burning the roots if you apply the fertilizer di directly on dr dry soil. That's the end of today's video. We hope you like this guide and we hope that it is useful to grow your alocasia in a healthy way and you make it look stunning. Make sure to watch or to check our other videos regarding houseplants and to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll be publishing more and more of this content soon. So until next time, happy planting!